At the end of part six, we had just completed shelling our Fabo chair. All the hard work is done now, and the last step is simply to cut out the legs on the sides, the front, and the back. To do this, we will simply use this curve in our side layout to cut out the chair side legs, this curve in this layout to cut out the front leg, and this curve in the rear to cut out the back legs. When cutting out the front and the rear, we will simply copy these sketches, and then using a mirror line, we'll mirror them over so that we can cop so that we can trim away both sides at the same time. These are simple steps, so I will simply just roll forward the feature tree to show what each step looks like. Here's the rear cutout added. The side leg cutouts. This is a two-directional cut. And finally the front leg. Then to finish it all off, we add some fillets in the sharp edges here along the sides and in the front. That's our completed chair. So why don't we see how it stacks up against some photos of the real deal. Here's a rear quarter view with an inset photograph of the real chair. We see it looks pretty good. The curvature maybe is not quite correct here. But we see the cutout here matches the cutout here pretty well. The side looks good and the shape of the arm in this area here seems to very well match the actual chair. Here's a front quarter view. Again, this area is looking pretty good, as well as this area here. And the big difference we notice here is that this has a generous radius on the front edge, whereas we intentionally chose to have a sharp edge coming all the way down to the bottom. And we also eliminated that awkward blend that was occurring in this area that you can see here in this subtle shadow. Finally, here's a top view. We see this curve doesn't look too bad. I think some of the differences between the real chair and this snapshot just have to do with perspective. And once again, we see that this is very curvy here, but sharp here, and then concave here. But our rollover surface here looks like it does a pretty good job of emulating the surface here. A couple of things to think about when building this chair is that you could actually make this outer surface as a boundary so that you can make different curves on the side than you use for the back. The danger there is that you might get a lumpy surface through this area and you probably need to add more guide curves going in this direction in order to hold the shape as it wraps around the corner. We got lucky because this surface is flat here and curvy here and when it swept around we were cutting away the curvy area that was up above the edge of the chair. Another thing to think about, as I mentioned previously, is to make these two surfaces a single boundary instead of two boundaries. And finally, there's a matter of how I created the bottom perimeter. I found it easiest to create three separate curves and then convert these into a fit spline. You may wish to try to draw a single spline that goes from this point, this point, this point, and this point, and use your handles to control the curve, which I think might give you a smoother result. That's the end of this tutorial. Good luck.